there are religious majorities and there are religious minorities. And the minorities, historically, these are people that are ashamed of being part of that religion because they don't fit with the majority. So they're looked down on as second class or they're looked down at as inferior people. Sometimes what happened was the minority community that was religious, they were doing well. So they were running good businesses, they were well-educated, and even though they're a small number, then they were especially hated by that society. These people are sucking the blood of our society. These are the, these are the problem in our society. They're not one of us. These are the foreigners. And this kind of mentality existed towards those that were successful. An interesting recent example of that in the, in the world is Sri Lanka. And in Sri Lanka, the Muslims are a very small minority. But they're actually very well educated, they have good jobs, they run good businesses, they're actually in some sense the economic and social, part of the economic and social elite of that society. And you find that in Sri Lanka every few years there's an eruption, you know, Buddhists are known to be pacifists, pacifists. they're supposed to be peaceful, He's going up in the mountains and con concentrating and meditating, and yet you find in Sri Lanka they have the most anti-Muslim hateful speeches that make Nazis look calm. That's the level of speech that they give towards the Muslims. And there's eruption of violence against the Muslims every few years. This happens towards the Muslims. So, and, and in this case, this happens to be the minority, happens to be the Muslims. But the reality of the world's history is any religious minority becomes a target. If they are, if they are succeeding, if they are becoming more prominent, if they are becoming more powerful, then they become a problem for that society. But now we find ourselves in a different age altogether. We find ourselves in an age where in many countries, religion itself is a minority. Even if people, their parents were Christian or their parents were Jewish or their parents were Hindu and their parents were Muslim, they don't identify themselves too much with that religion. Practically, they're all the same. They're all hanging out together. They all have the same habits. So you might find at a bar, in different countries, you might find a Christian, a Jew, a Muslim, a Hindu, all having a drink together. It's common. So the, the religion itself has become less and less and less relevant. And so those people who try to hold on to their religion, and of course today I'll be talking about ourselves, Muslims, those who try to hold on to their religion, they become strange. Why do you, like if, you, if you're a doctor and you work at a hospital and you take break for salah to pray dhuhr, your, co your colleagues are saying, why do you do that? Don't you know your religion is so extreme? I mean, it's such, an, such a barbaric religion. It's so backwards. Why do you follow that? I thought you're an educated man. So, and if you're in the university, and if there's a, there's a girl in the university and she's wearing the hijab, everybody's looking at her like, why are you wearing that? What's wrong with you? Because this is not the way someone educated and intelligent and modern is supposed to be. This is a backwards thing. This belongs in villages and third world countries and places that, you know, people that kill each other. This is for those backwards people. Why are you following this? I thought you're smarter than that. So the deen, anything that looks like Islam is looked at like it's backwards. But this is not just something that happens in Europe or just happens in Australia or happens in some parts of America. Or, it's not just there. This is actually something that happens even in the Muslim world. Some of my friends from America, they went back to their home country and it's time for salah and they went to pray. They heard the adhan and they went into the masjid and they prayed. There's a 20 year old young man went to pray in the masjid and all of his cousins, all of his friends are like, what are you doing? Why are you going in the masjid? What's wrong with you? Oh my God, did you become a sheikh? You know, they think, Muslims think, that even something basic like that is extreme. So we're living in a time now where being a Muslim is seen as something strange. Interestingly, it's seen as something strange by non-Muslims, but it's also seen as something strange by Muslims themselves. And in that environment, you feel like you always have to defend your religion. We're always under the attack, verbally at least, and we're always defending ourselves. No, 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 Islam is not like that. Oh, yeah, those are some crazy Muslims. I'm not like them. I'm normal. We're just trying to prove ourselves to be normal all the time. Eventually, the thought comes in your head, maybe Islam is not so great after all. Why do I have to follow this religion if 
everybody around me, these really smart people, they think it's a stupid thing to do to follow this religion. The majority thinks it's an idiotic thing. So why am I holding on to it so much? Maybe it's just because of my, is it because of my parents? You know, if I was born in a Hindu family, maybe I would have been Hindu. Maybe the only reason I'm Muslim is because I was born in a, in a Muslim family. That's, that's the only reason. Why else do I have to hold on to this religion? And the only reason I'm not questioning it, because if I question it, my mother will have a heart attack. But actually in my head, I have all these questions. Because all these questions were put in my head by the world around me. One time I went to play basketball with some young guys and it was time for Salah. I was out in a park, it's time for Salah. So we go in a corner and a few of us prayed. And the other boys that normally they pray, they didn't pray. And I wondered why didn't they pray? So I talked to them afterwards, why didn't you join the prayer? You know, other people were there, they were staring at us. It just kind of feels strange to pray in front of them, you know, like they're, they're gonna look at us funny. And I don't want to be, I don't want to be the strange one, you know. On the flip side of it, you have a saying of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَطُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَى Congratulations to the strange ones, right? لا إِكْرَاهَ فِي الدِّينِ Allah Azza wa Jalla says, there is no possibility of forcing anyone in the religion. You cannot force into the religion. I cannot pressure someone to become a Muslim. Your children stop praying. You say, salli, salli, salli. You're forcing them. And okay, maybe they're, they're tired of hearing it from you. So you, they start praying. But they're only praying because you're standing there looking at them like a security guard. And when you're not there, when you go to work, when you go to a meeting, are they going to pray? No. This, that religion has no value. Because even when they stand in salah for, for, for us, they're like, what, what, in, what knee are they going to make? I'm praying for rakah because my mother is staring at me. Allah <laughs> right? That's not for Allah. It's because you're being forced to pray. Iman happens when you come to the conclusion that you will worship this Rabb, that this man is a messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa This Quran is the word of Allah. When you come to this conclusion on your own, then that conclusion is so powerful, no amount of pressure, no amount of criticism, no amount of people staring at you, even people trying to kill a believer, they will not leave it. They won't leave it. This Iman was something strange. I told you in the beginning of this khutbah, now we're going to come back to that beginning again. In the beginning I said the minorities have the weak position. But you know the people of Iman in the Qur'an, they're always a minority. Always. Ibrahim salam is the biggest minority, he was one by himself. And it's not even alone, and there's a pressure from him, from his father, or there's pressure from society, which happened. But eventually there's even pressure from a king, from the government. أَلَمْ تَرَى إِلَى الَّذِي حَاجَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ فِي رَبِّهِ أَنْ أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ الْمُلْكِ That much pressure, and he's not going to leave his religion. Why? Because he came to it on his own. Islam is not like Christianity. It's not like Hinduism. It's not like Buddhism. It's not just a religion we follow because our parents followed it. This is the haqqul yaqeen. This is the truth that gives you absolute conviction. It doesn't matter who believes around you, who doesn't believe. It doesn't matter if it's cool or it's weird. It, it doesn't matter. You become so powerful in your faith internally that you could have darkness all around you and the darkness doesn't make you dark. Here Allah says, Allahu waliyu ladina amanu. Allah is the protective friend of those who have iman. Especially the young people, I want you to think about this for yourself. You see non-Muslim friends of yours in college, university, high school, whatever, right? You see their, those friends, they can talk however they want, they can drink whatever they want, they can smoke whatever they want, they can do whatever they want, and you know what I mean. They can watch whatever they want, and you're like, my parents think that's haram. You know, but I can't do that. It's, Islam seems like a prison, and everybody else has freedom, and I'm living in this prison for no reason. Right? That's what it feels like. What I want you to think about is these young sahaba around the Prophet before Islam, 
before Islam, everything was halal for them. Drinking was okay. Zina was okay. Partying was okay. Anything they wanted to do, they could do. They had complete freedom. Complete freedom. And then the Prophet is calling them to this religion. And the moment they accept this religion, their family is going to hate them. Their society is going to hate them. They're going to be socially and economically and politically boycotted. And all the things they used to enjoy, they can't enjoy them anymore. Life became hell. All for what? For accepting this religion. So the question is, what is You have to give so much up to accept this religion and nobody's forcing them. In fact, everybody's forcing them, come back to normal. Leave. This is too much. Just come back to normal. The question is, what is so powerful that they're giving up everything? Everything that they desire inside, they're giving it up. Every pressure from outside, they don't care about it. And they're still coming to the Prophet ﷺ. And they would rather be tortured to death than go back. This cannot be something weak. This cannot be something, oh, just I'm Muslim because I'm Muslim. No, this is something really powerful. It's a fire inside them that no matter what, you can't put it out. You cannot put it out. This is all a believer needs. This is all real iman, is all a believer needs. Then every other pressure, every other social structure, Every other norm, everything that's normal to everyone else and it's not normal to you as a Muslim, all of that becomes easy to handle. Then you don't say, oh, it's so hard. Life in Europe is so hard. Oh, yeah, Allah, life in America is so hard. No. You think your life is hard? No, I'm pretty sure the life in Mecca was much harder. The life of Ibrahim salam was much harder. But Allah Azza wa Jal gave them وَجَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجٍ There's no difficulty in this deed for you. Why? Because you're absolutely convinced. Now let me give you yet another example before I wrap this up. Some young man decides that he's going to join the football team. He thinks he's got talent and he wants to join the football team. When he joins the football team or he wants to join, he's going to train hard, yes or no? He's going to run every day. He's going to train hard every day. And other people will look at him and say, Man, don't you get tired? Yeah, man, I get really tired. But I love it. I love it. Other people, I, I could never make that kind of effort. That's too much. It's raining outside. He's running and he's training. It's sunny outside. It's too hot out. He doesn't care. He's training. Because he wants to join the team. He's restricting his diet. All his friends are eating ice cream. He's having a salad. Why is he doing that? Why is he training himself like that? Because he has a goal in front of them, in front of him. And that goal is so powerful that he's willing to, to go through any pain because he sees that goal. What Allah did in the Quran for those who have Iman, He gave them a goal. He gave them a really powerful goal. Once they become convinced of that goal, then you, anybody else sees that as pain. You see it as, nah, I love it. This is what makes me stronger. This is what makes me unique. And you know, not everybody is capable of struggle. Anybody else can say, oh, we came to the society, we mixed with the non-Muslim culture, we became like them and we forgot about our religion. That's fine. Muslims don't have that excuse. We have the word of Allah with us. Whether we're standing next to a million people at Hajj or we're standing by ourselves alone for 20 years, doesn't matter. Our Islam is our Islam. It doesn't depend on anybody else. It doesn't lean on anybody else. It's actually your own personal grit and responsibility. So Allah says, يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النور. He pulls them out of darknesses into light. This religion will not be forced on you. But once you have it deeply inside you, no one can force it out of you. No one can force it out of you. It's the most powerful gift that Allah has given you. That when we have Allah, Iman of Allah in our hearts, and nobody's stronger than you. Everybody else is weak. This thing, this Quran that Allah gave us is so powerful, it changed the entire world. Why do you think it can't change you? Allah put the light of Iman and the light of the Quran 
deep inside of our hearts and really make us understand why is it that we're Muslim and we're able to carry this religion with confidence and with pride no matter where we live.